Okay, the last tip, the last trick that I wanna go over is the question adaptation. But we've covered a lot of like how you unpack an essay question. So when you get a new essay question on the day and when you do your practice, I'll go through how to approach it. But again, we've covered kind of how to break them down. You need to identify the key terms and you need to ask yourself those mini questions. What type? What? What about? How? Why? So what? If you ask yourself a few of those questions, a couple of them are going to allow you to expand. And that means that even though you should be using the actual key terms of the question and not synonyms, do not use synonyms in your essays, you're going to elaborate on them so that you're not merely repeating the question. Okay, so that trick of asking yourself mini questions in relation to the key terms of the question, what type, how, why, so what, everyone should write down those questions, identify the key terms of the question, and then ask what type, how, why, so what, that is going to give you an immediate strategy to use to elaborate, force yourself to say something specific and meaningful about the question. The first question though is how much do you need to adapt your essays? You're probably wondering, how much do I have to adapt it? Well, here's a useful diagram. The color code in here represents the level of adaptation required. An introduction, topic sentences, and links require maximum adaptation. It doesn't mean that you can't reuse and recycle the draft material that you've memorized. In fact, you probably will stick with the exact same structure and argument fundamentally. But what it means is you need to have lots of the actual key terms of the question in those sentences in your introduction your topic sentence link sentence and conclusion as well you need to be using the key terms of the question a lot in my introduction i would try to use at least one or two key terms of the question in every single sentence it's it has to be excessive if you can practice using the key terms of the question in every single sentence of your introduction, not repeating them, using them in a meaningful way that links to what you already wanted to say, then you are going to be in a very good position for that band six criteria, especially when it comes to answering the question. How well did this student answer the question? Well, they used the key terms nine times in the introduction and in a meaningful way, and it's well structured. How could that not be band six? You wanna be in a band six, you wanna be in the marker's mind at a band six level once they finished reading your introduction. If you write a sentence in your introduction that doesn't reference directly an actual key term of the question, I'm not talking about synonyms, do not use synonyms. I'm talking about using the actual key terms of the question. The marker's going to start thinking you're not answering that question, which is exactly what's happening, you're not. So introduction is the most key. Topic sentence, link sentence is also key. You can still preserve all of your evidence. You can have the same sentence starters for the most part, but how you explain it, those little links, you might have to tweak a couple of words. Maybe you have to substitute a word in for the word of the question, but that is lighter than what you have to do in the introduction and topic sentences. Okay, so that's the level to which you have to adapt. Now, here's the basic process. Again, there are those micro questions or mini questions to ask. We've been over that, so hopefully you've noted those questions down. But of course, the first step, what I want you to do on the day of the exam is not to start writing your first sentence straight away once you read the essay question. It's to identify the key terms, ask these questions, try and come up with a little answer for each of them, and then relate key terms together. You'll often only find two or three key terms in a question, and we'll, we'll do a, one practice in a moment before we finish. So there are the steps. Identify key terms, so like underline them or mentally note them. For each of those terms, ask yourself, what type? How, who, what, so what? You don't have to answer all of those little questions, but they're little prompts to you to think, ah, oh, how can I answer them and link in what I already wanted to say? And you have to practice that, of course. And then how do I relate these different keywords together? And that, that might be simple, that might require a little bit more thought, but that's the first thing you need to think about before you start writing. And then obviously you have to be very efficient with writing and make those adaptations along the way. Okay, example, let's finish strong here. Here's a question. The greatest stories, and everyone can do this, this is for human experiences, right? Storytelling is a key word in your rubric. The greatest stories are those which both confront and enlighten. To what extent does your study of your prescribed text support this statement? What do we think are the key words of the question? How many are there? You've got to account for both sentences, 
what do we think are the key terms? And when I say key terms, what are the words that you should be using all throughout your essay? Not necessarily all together. It's good to separate them, always separate them and differentiate them. But what are the words that you would use a lot of throughout the essay? And I want to make it clear here. When I say key terms, I'm talking about the words you have to use in the essay. So we've got confront, enlighten, correct. Anyone who said confront and enlighten, they are clearly two key words that you will have to use a lot of. Here's a key tip for, the, key tip for that. You don't just have to use that, those forms of the word. Confront in, conf confronted, con confrontational, enlightenment, enlighten in. Any derivative of the word is fine, but use that actual word. Don't use shock instead of confront. Does everyone understand that? Use the actual word. So the three key words are stories, confront, and enlighten. They're the words that you would use. I'm not, we're not talking about to what extent or how or anything like that. We're talking about the actual words you should use a lot of. Stories, you might use storytelling. 